There is a lot of different types of guitars out there with different shapes, sizes, prices, you name it, which can all get pretty overwhelming, especially if it's your first time buying a guitar. So I'm gonna show you what I think are the 10 most important things for you to check before buying an electric guitar that will help you find the one that's right for you. And I'll share my number one tip when buying any guitar that will make it easier to play and sound better too. So a really good place to start when buying a guitar is to think about the style of music that you want to play and taking a look at what the guitarists in that genre are using. Some guitars work better at certain styles of music than others, and I'll show you that as we dive more into those specifics. So by taking a look at what your favorite guitarist is using, it's a great shortcut to narrowing down your options. I was really into Joe Bonamassa and Slash when I was getting started, so this Les Paul was a great choice for me. Next, set a budget. There really isn't an upper limit that you can spend on a guitar, so my advice here is just to stick with what you can afford. You don't have to spend a lot of money to get a good guitar, but you don't wanna go super cheap either. A brand new guitar for $100 may look like a great deal, but in my experience, the quality usually just isn't worth it, and it can actually hold back your playing. If you are looking for something more affordable, then I'd recommend sticking between the $250 to $600 range, and that will get you a decent quality instrument that you can learn and practice on without breaking the bank. If you're on the lower end of that budget, then I really recommend sticking with the known guitar brands, like Squire by Fender or Epiphone by Gibson, or the entry level models of basically people who are known for making guitars. I'll also say don't be afraid to shop secondhand because you can get so much more for your money. In fact, most of my guitars are secondhand. All right, so now we're onto the specifics of the guitars themselves and what to look for when buying one. And I'll do this by breaking it down into different sections. So we've got the body, the neck, and the hardware. So starting with the body, the main things that you wanna check are the shape and the weight. Now you might be wondering about the wood type at this point and how that plays into it, but it really doesn't affect the sound. It mostly just affects the weight and how it looks. So it's not that important. So for the shape, I think it's really important that you have something that feels good, but also looks good as well. Something that you're gonna be really excited to pick up and play. The Stratocaster or Strat is by far the most common guitar shape that you'll see out there, along with the Les Paul that you saw earlier. But here's a few of the most common guitar shapes out there so you know what they're called and you know what to look for. Now it's worth mentioning some guitars like this Strat have contours and cutaways on the body that make it feel a little bit more comfortable during those long hours of practice. But another thing to consider is the guitar's weight, especially if you're gonna play standing up. The normal range for weight is between seven pounds, which is fairly light, up to 12 pounds, which is considered pretty heavy. And you have some either side of that as well. Les Pauls in particular are known for being quite chunky and quite heavy. Some guitars also have what's called weight relieved bodies, where a little bit of wood's been removed from the inside just to make it a little bit lighter. So that's something you can check out if weight is important to you. As a little tip, if you're going for a heavier guitar and plan on playing standing up, then I recommend getting a wider strap like this because it will distribute the weight more evenly across your shoulder. Or you can get something with a padded shoulder strap like this. Now we're onto the neck. And there's a few things that we wanna check out here. The neck profile, the fretboard radius, and the scale length. That might sound a little bit spooky, but it's actually really, really straightforward. The neck profile is just the shape of the back of the neck as it sits in your hand. And to me, it's one of the biggest things that affects how a guitar feels to play. I find that the thinner a guitar's neck is, the easier it is to play because it's less draining on your hand. And personally, I prefer them. Now, annoyingly, Different companies have different ways of describing their neck profiles. Fender and a couple of others use terms like C, V, and U to describe the general shape, whereas Gibson, for example, uses slim tapered and rounded. So it makes comparing them like for like a little bit tricky. For what it's worth, this guitar here, which is a Fender Marauder, uses a modern C-type neck, and it is hands down the best neck that I've ever played on any guitar. And as I understand it, Fender uses this same neck on their player series of guitars. Now we're looking at the fretboard radius, which is how curved or flat the fretboard is, which is this front part of the neck. A higher number for the fretboard radius, like 12 inches and above, means that the fretboard will be flatter, which generally feels a little bit easier to play 
especially if you're playing higher up on the neck. But some people prefer a smaller radius, like the 9.5 inches and lower that you'll find on most Fender style guitars. And this can be a little bit easier on your hands if you're playing chords lower down on the neck. To me, it's never really made a massive difference. And there's certainly more important things that I'd consider when looking at a guitar but it does make a difference to some people, so it's at least worth being aware of. Finally, for the neck, we've got the scale length, which is how big the guitar is, or more accurately, the distance between the guitar's nut and bridge. A shorter scale length generally means that guitar feels easier to play, especially if you have smaller hands. That's because the frets will be slightly closer together and the strings will feel easier to play if we're comparing a like-for-like -like string gauge but more on that in a minute. The two main scale lengths that you'll see are 25.5 inches like you'll find on most Fender style guitars and 24.75 inches that you'll see on most Gibson style guitars. Both are perfectly viable. I've used both and I learned on both with no problem, but it's another one of those small things that can make a big difference to someone. If you're a smaller player, you can look at getting a three quarter size guitar, which has an even shorter scale length, so it'll be even easier to play. So now let's take a look at the hardware, which is mostly just the pickups and the bridge. There are a couple of little other things as well, but I'll group them together and put them at the end. So the pickups are what's going to have the biggest impact on your guitar's overall sound, other than the amplifier, which is a completely different video. Let me know if you want to see that one. But broadly speaking, there's two types of pickups single coils and humbuckers. Single coils sound brighter and are great for chimey sounding clean playing. They also cut through a little bit more with blues and rock. But they get buzzier the more distortion that you add. So if you want to play heavy music without that buzzy sound, then you're probably going to want to use humbuckers. Humbuckers, like the name suggests, were designed to buck the hum of single coils and will give you a much clearer sound at high distortion levels. They also sound warmer and smoother on a clean setting, which works great for jazz and blues. Now, if you want even more clarity at super high distortion levels, then you want to look into what are called active pickups. And these are really popular with metal guitarists. If you want the best of both worlds, you can get guitars with humbuckers and single coils on them. And the most common arrangement is what's called an HSS or humbucker single coil single coil setup. And that just gives you a little bit more versatility. Now we've got the bridge. And the biggest thing here is whether you want a tremolo system or not. Tremolo style bridges like this one that you use a whammy bar so you can add vibrato or do those massive dramatic pitch dives. The downside is that you might have to retune your guitar a bit more often if you use it a lot. To get around this, you can get guitars with locking bridges which anchor the strings into place. So if you're doing massive pitch dives or anything like that, you're not gonna go out of tune. And this is really popular again with metal guitarists. But if you're not too bothered about having a trem system, you can always just not use it or get what's called a hard tail bridge like this one, which just doesn't move. And the benefit of that is it also gives you a little bit of extra tuning stability. So those are the big ones, but here's a couple of honorable mentions for things you might wanna be aware of as well. First, there's the nut, which is where the strings rest at the top of your guitar's neck. And this can affect your tone. Plastic is the lowest quality nut you can get. Bone or synthetic bone or what's called Graftec or Tusk are much better. There's different types of tuners that you can get as well that either fall into the standard or vintage category. Both work exactly the same, you just string them up very slightly differently. You can also get locking tuners which help hold your guitar's tuning better. The frets, which are these metal lines that run across here, come in different sizes. It doesn't make a massive difference, but I find that the bigger jumbo frets are a little bit easier to play. You can also get guitars with more or less frets depending on the style of music that you want to play. 21 frets will suit most people, but if you like technical or melodic style of playing, 
then you might want to go for something like a 24 fret so you've got more options higher up on the neck. String gauge is also really important which is the thickness of your guitar's strings and you can always change them out for thinner or thicker strings depending on what you fancy. Generally thinner strings sound a little bit brighter and are easier to use whereas thicker strings are a little bit tougher but they have more power behind them and they sound louder as well. So let's wrap up with some final tips. Firstly, if you can, I really, really recommend heading to your local guitar store and trying as many different guitars as you can, especially if it's your first time buying a guitar. Reading around and watching videos like this are a great way to prep yourself on what to expect and what to look for, but it's a completely different thing to hold the guitar in your hands. And what looks great on paper might not always be what's best for you as a player. And this is where my number one guitar tip comes into play. And that's when you buy a guitar at a store, ask them to set it up. This means that they'll replace the old strings and give it a clean, but importantly, they'll adjust all the bits on the guitar so it feels better to play and it will sound better as well. Any decent guitar store should do this for free if you buy the guitar there, but if you don't buy the guitar there or they just decide to charge you, it should only cost around $70 and I promise it is worth it. If you want to learn a little bit more about what a setup is and actually how you can do one yourself, I've included a video in the description that walks you through it step by step. So let me know what guitar you've got your eye on in the comments down below and any questions that you might have and I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.